My evil daughter-in-law has filed a restraining order against me over trying to be a loving grandmother to my grandson. She publicly humiliated me by intentionally having me served in front of my friends. And now she will soon be taking my grandson as far away as possible. At first, I was embarrassed to say anything about this. But as we approach the court date where she will attempt to slap me with a permanent restraining order, I'm angry. I am angry and I want to use this to advocate for other grandparents who have gone through this. These children deserve their grandparents. Today's parents are too busy with their social media and mental illnesses to properly parent and love their children. Without grandparents, they will be lost. Grandparents and grandchildren have rights too. We need to fight this injustice. Grandparents matter. You need to speak to Elena and tell her how ridiculous she is being. This is tearing our family apart, and this is not what Chris would have wanted. No, Mom, I'm not going to involve myself in this. I love you both, and baby, and I'm not going to jeopardize my relationship with them. So you're choosing some woman over your own mother. After everything I have done for you, I gave up everything to raise you and give you what you want and need. She isn't some woman. She's my sister-in-law, and Chris would not want this. Just respect her boundaries. Either do as I ask, as your mother, or I'm going to cut you off. If you can't respect my wishes, I don't need to be funding you financially. You can figure it out yourself. Go ahead, Mom. I'm tired of this. You need help. Court is now in session to determine the validity of a permanent restraining order against Gail Blank. Your Honor, this is a degrading waste of the court's time. I am no danger to Ella now or my grandchild. I have multiple witnesses with me who are willing to speak on my character, as well as what they had been through as grandparents who have been unjustly kept from their grandchildren. We are not here to listen to others' testimonies on being kept from their grandchildren. We are here to discuss this particular case. But don't you see? This is a massive nationwide problem. It is an issue of human rights. Grandparents deserve to have rights to their grandchildren. We are an extension of their parents and have so much to offer. This should not be allowed to happen. Do you have anything to offer towards your particular? This does have to do with my case. The court needs to use my trial to set a precedent that grandparents should have rights to their grandchildren unless they are criminals. I will not ask you again if you have anything to present about your specific case. I have submitted my character testimonies to the court. I have no record. I am a pillar in my community. I am a loyal church leader and donor to underprivileged communities. I deserve to see my grandchild. You have openly admitted to harassing your daughter-in-law. Can you explain this? I was being denied my ability to speak to him on the phone. And I felt that my rights were being threatened, so I did what I felt I needed to do to assert my rights. I do not see anything wrong with asserting my rights. I no longer have those rights, so I do not see how this is relevant. I am just at a loss as to why a restraining order is necessary. I am not a danger. I have never harmed her or baby. I have just wanted to be involved. Elena, can you explain to the court why you are seeking a permanent restraining order? Your Honor, I am very worried about my safety and my son's safety in the presence of Gail. Since the last court appearance, she has openly admitted to driving by my home multiple times. She has made false statements about me online. I have blocked eight different Facebook accounts she has made to communicate with me on top of her normal phone number and email address. But what majorly crossed the line for my concern for our safety was when she stopped me to a grocery store. She openly admitted to this and insinuates she could have stolen my child if she chose to. I do not feel safe. Oh, honestly, there's no reason to feel unsafe. 
Clearly, I was just trying to keep my grandson safe. If you took my opinion into consideration, it would only benefit baby. I am worried about my son's safety. After that event at the grocery store, I applied for a concealed carry and bought my first. I have been taking classes at the gun range with my friend's husband to learn how to defend myself and my son. I don't want her near us. You would shoot your mother-in-law because you don't like that she doesn't follow your every rule. That is insane, Elena. This is exactly why I say you need to seek therapy. No normal person would say this. Court is adjourned while I review the documentation that has been submitted. We will reconvene after lunch. After looking over the documentation submitted today by both parties, I am prepared to give my ruling. I am putting a one-year restraining order in effect, effective today. This can be resubmitted at the end of the year and continued into a three-year order if need be. There will be no communication between the parties. This includes the child of Elena. Any attempt to breach this order may result in contempt of court. What happens if there is an emergency and I need to communicate with her? There is no reason for you to communicate with her. It should also be noted that any attempt to communicate with her through a third party is also considered contempt of court. The only acceptable form of communication would be through attorneys. Court is now dismissed. Bailiff, please escort Elena to her car. Gail, please wait until Dur- I lost the fight. The judge didn't care about any of my evidence. He didn't care about the injustices happening to grandparents everywhere. He took the easy way out and didn't fight for our God-given rights to our grandchildren. It breaks my heart that I am being unjustly kept from my grandbaby for at least one year. Probably longer. I know she will seek to lengthen the restraining order for as long as she can. He has already lost so much. And now he is losing someone else. I have no will to live my life anymore. I don't even want to see my friends or any activities I enjoyed. I just sit at home and cry over my poor grandchild. Give me words of wisdom to help me through this time. I can't imagine doing this to anyone. The pain is unbearable. Hang in there, you poor soul. I recommend writing letters to your grandchild. I know you can't send them yet, but once able to you will have letters to show them you thought of them while you were apart. That is a wonderful idea. I will write a letter every week and by presents. That way when I am allowed to see him again I will have years worth of letters and gifts. He will know how much I love him. I understand your pain. I wanted to unalive after being kept from my grandchild. It is a pain like no other. It is a special kind of pain for someone like me. It is worse since my son is dead and now it is basically like my grandson is dead too. His bish mother doesn't even care that I am grieving. All that matters is her. I hate her. Hey, have y'all left the state yet? No, we haven't. I'm loading the last bit into the moving truck. Why? Apparently mom had a heart attack or something this morning. I got a call from the hospital that she is in the cardiac wing and is inconsolable about how she is going to end alive without knowing her grandbaby. Well, I will pray she makes a full recovery. But I will not be going to see her. I know. I wasn't saying you should. Maybe you could let her facetime the baby. Just because she had a heart attack, that's all. No. Your mother is manipulating the situation. You need to realize that. I know, but she's my mom. What am I supposed to do? This is just how she is. I understand that she is your mother and you feel like you have an obligation towards her. I get it. 
But she I aware that any communication, even third party, is a violation of the restraining order that we just got last week. Well, she didn't tell me to message you. I decided to after talking to the doctor. I didn't even talk to her. And I need you to understand that I don't want you to tell me anything about her. She is out of my life for a reason. If you insist on trying to get me to forgive her, I won't be able to talk to you either. I don't want that. I get it. I just thought this was different because she was in the hospital. It isn't. Unless she is in the ground, it is none of my concern. Okay. Okay, I get it. Do you still have that Amazon Fire tablet I got baby for his birthday? Yeah, he loves it in the car. What about it? I know you didn't want me to talk to you about mom, but this is important. She said she downloaded Life 360 on it so that if you ever lost it or lost him, she would be able to find you. I didn't know until just now. I'm so sorry. Are you fucking kidding me? So she's been tracking me for the past few months. I'm sorry. I had no idea. She said she figured out how to keep it from showing up on the main screen through that damn grandparents group. But if you get rid of it now, she won't know your new address. I'm about to throw the damn thing out the window. I don't trust that there's nothing else on there. I don't blame you. Elena reported the tracker downloaded on the tablet to the local police, as well as the contact through her sister-in-law. Gail was given a warning. Immediately upon receiving the warning, she began to message Elena through a new Facebook about how the police were not needed. Elena did not respond and instead went to the police again with proof of contact. She was then able to renew her order for three years instead of one. Gail was only forced to pay court costs and attorney fees. The three years ends this fall. Our next story begins Monday, July 4th.